This video is partnered with Samsung. Hey, what's up guys? Chris Jr. here for Chris Gar. Today we're creating an entire short film by only using a smartphone. So before jumping into how I shot it and the breakdown, here is Once in a Lifetime, a short created entirely on the Galaxy Note 9. in the air, the trained and careful forester can build a fire in a box and keep it there. Mm, it's a spear. And out of the fire, like the phoenix in the How are you feeling? comes new life for the dragon. <laughs> Let's uh, get a photo. The least. Because the least is also life. And part of all. A forest is a singing bird. A singing bird and all the other creatures that help form the pattern of the wild. The forest is full of riches. A treasury. A tapestry of beauty and life. The forest is full of riches, and the riches of the forest are for all. Let's go for a ride.
Now we've all heard the very noble idea that you don't need a fancy camera to tell a good story. And that is true for the most part. I still think that each story calls for itself a specific tool and people for it to be best expressed. But that is when we're talking about really high level concepts. For the rest of us that just want to express ideas with the means that we have, we have no excuse left to, to not do things anymore. This is why when Samsung reached out for a collaboration, I immediately wanted to put this idea to the test and plan and shoot an entire short film on a smartphone. So I started by writing an idea and I think the best stories usually come from a truthful place. So if you're ever feeling stuck or without ideas, find something that is personal or that you care about and start from there. So that's what I did. I, I just wrote a quick synopsis. I just felt a feeling and a story and I just kind of just threw it down without really thinking much, without trying to sound fancy or polishing it all off. I just wanted to get the idea down on paper. So I created a synopsis and then from there I later developed it into a full script and I used an app to write it so that it could be formatted properly. And, and this is really important because my next step was finding actors and sending them the script to see if they were interested. But not only that, the script is also the core guide that tells you everything that you need. That's a problem. Maybe I could just get it all off. From there, we just had to look for props and set pieces like this massive old heavy TV that I had to lug around. This won't fit in the elevator, so I have to walk it up five flights of stairs. Why? We found a great location that fit the story perfectly. I drew out my scenes into vignettes. This is my storyboard, and this is my key visual plan. And the pen on the Galaxy Note is an amazing tool for this. Having a fine tip rather than your finger unlocks so many new possibilities on a phone. And I even use this to annotate things on my script, to sketch things out like basic camera plots. Then finally, with all these elements in place, it's crucial to know that you will have enough time to get everything. So a shot list will keep you on track and organize your shots that you need to tell your story. Then a schedule will allow you to shoot them in the most functional order while making sure that you can finish everything on time. Now, logistically, this is really important because there are a lot of moving pieces in a project that need to be shot in the right order. And this is why most movies or, or scenes in movies are not usually shot in the order in which they're shown in. So this is the order that we shot our short instead of how it was shown. And this is because we had different location changes and we had to shoot where it made the most sense, where we could get everything in one spot before moving on to the next. And so this was also a matter of prioritizing to make sure that we didn't have extras waiting around so that they could be wrapped as soon as possible and that we could keep moving from there. Now to help me capture this, I used a few additional tools. I didn't want to go all out and turn this phone into a crazy rig, but I know I wanted to get something for creating smooth cinematic shots. So for the lens, I picked up this anamorphic lens from Moment, and this doesn't really improve the quality of the phone lens, but instead it converts it to have an anamorphic look, which I love. So it stretches the image so that you can capture that nice wide aspect ratio when it's later squished down. And then the coating on the glass gives you those nice anamorphic streaks, which I'm a huge fan of. Now the gimbal I use is the DJI Osmo, which helped me get the tracking shots that I planned in my storyboard. So after getting all the shots that I know I needed to tell my story, I started going to detail shots and wishlist shots that could help me get some creative options in the edit. Now in editing these scenes and doing some VFX, some color work, I didn't want to alter the image too much, but I also wanted to compensate for the lack of huge lighting gear and a higher budget. So in this case, you can see that I just had to get some lights closer to my subject and then later masking them out so that they could be hidden with a clean plate. And this was my way of lighting most of my scenes. I always had a bit of a kicker that could add some separation to my subject, especially when it comes to a phone, because I didn't really have the option to have a shell of the field, so that separation had to be created with lighting instead. So on the left side, I had a warm kicker with a more daylight highlight on the opposite side. And then I wrapped that light around with an LED panel that gave me a little bit more frontal light for the subject's key. And as you can see, I kind of kept this idea for most of my setups and my close-ups especially. So we have again some kickers and then we have some sort of third light that gives a key for our subject's face. One was an orange tungsten balance ice light and then a blue gel ice light for the flickering of the TV. And in most of my setups, my 120D was actually mostly used to create ambience. So I would direct it towards the ceiling or a wall and if placed behind our subjects I can add a nice layer of dimension to the background especially while keeping our subjects clean or with a kicker that has that same light. Then with some coloring touches, music, foley, dialogue recordings, the short was complete. 
So I hope you enjoyed this project. It was a ton of hard work, but I'm so happy that I get to share with you and talk about it. I hope this has inspired you to shoot something. You know, it's hard to get past the many obstacles that your mind can put in front of you. You shouldn't let anyone, especially yourself, be in the way of you expressing your unique perspective of the world. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Carr, and I will see you next time. I wanted to thank again Samsung for partnering with us on this video. It was honestly such a ton of fun. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let's go for a ride. And of course, thank you to you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. It honestly means so much to me. All right, that's it. See you in the next one.